Well, look what I caught in the house. This is a Steatoda nobilis, better known, of course, as the false widow spider. This is a big fat female ready to burst with eggs. And I captured it on its way in through the patio doors into our breakfast room. Now, these have been springing up all over the southern part of England for the last, I don't know, maybe decade, but certainly the last couple of years, they've become really, really common. My wife was one of the first people to get bitten seriously. I don't know how long ago, it was maybe five, six years ago. And I'll show you some pictures at the end if you're squeamish, don't bother looking at them. But they've been springing up all across South England, across London, um, all the way up to the, some of the drier counties like Norfolk, from that sort of direction. So if we zoom in and have a look at him, I'll try and get this in better focus. Right, there you go. So she's fast asleep, sulking. You can see the, compared to the 20p there, the body is big. It's about the size of a average man's little fingernail. It's shiny, as you can see. This is not a dull, hairy spider like the normal ones you see. And the abdomen or body part is um, bigger than a, an average garden pea or frozen pea that you'd have. And the head is very small. The legs are actually quite long. It's quite a big spider. So there's a 20 pence piece there. You can see we're curled up just to give it sizing, but it's much bigger than that with its legs spread out. Now they come into your house, of course, to um, to lay eggs and hide. Th these spiders are quite kind of timid, really. They won't bite you unless you're, you aggravate them or you squash them. I think most people get bit and either sit on one, get it between their leg um, as they sit down or something along that sort of nature. So generally undisturbed, they won't bite, but when they do, you're certainly gonna know it, that's for sure. So, and the other thing to look out for is there are old webs. What tends to happen is you look around your house, you think, oh, I didn't see that as an old cobweb. And that's the telltale sign really, because it's not necessarily an old cobweb. Their cobwebs look, they look old, even though they're brand new. They make a very scruffy, small, almost pointless looking web. I don't even know how they catch anything. It's almost just like a sticky mess. And here's a photograph of one here. So you can see there, it just looks like an old useless uh, web, but that's your telltale sign if you see one of those inside your house often the odd threads off of a plant and there's a picture here of uh, where i caught another female again in the same room by the back garden um, i filled the pot the plant pot there out with water and uh, i saw suddenly saw one poking out between those brown bits of the plant this is the bit to look away if you're a bit squeamish so up first we have the bite so it starts off as a red what you think is an itchy mosquito bite doesn't seem to heal um, last for a week or so you then start blaming horse flies and a few other things go to your doctor get antibiotics doesn't make any difference um, you can see here the uh, black necrosis that is where if you think about how a spider eats it dissolves its food and sucks it up with a straw and that's exactly what it's just done to your body um, it's just created a dissolved pocket of flesh as soon as that thing ruptures um, or you burst it, you can see the ooze starting to bulge out. Um, by the time it's got that far, your flesh is necrotized and turned into spider soup and will soon be slopping out down your leg or wherever it happened to bit you. Up next, you get the, the rupture, where you can see here, it's on someone's calf. This was somebody else in Hampshire. Uh, only today I was given this. Uh, so there you can see where it's ruptured and it's oozed out and you can see it's left quite a nasty wound in a hole and you can see the uh, what they thought might be some kind of cellulitis around the outside of it um, and there it's just bursting out you then normally have to have this packed uh, the antibiotics really just stops the secondary infection and then finally we go back to I'll show you the first picture again so there is the uh, necrosis from the bite and the bruising around it and then when it ruptures you're left with this rather horrible looking hole where there's no flesh left whatsoever. You literally just got a big hole in your body. And that was deep. You could put your finger in there up to your knuckle and touch the back of your kneecap bone. It was that bad. Um, it then gets, but the way this heals, by the way, is you pack it with a wadding and you then, uh, it then eventually you pack it less shallow and shallow and shallow until the flesh reforms from behind it. And then eventually um, you get to the skin layer and it of course uh, seals up. You're talking probably two to three months for that to fill in and then probably a year before you think to yourself blimey that was bad news so like i said you just imagine what that would do with a bit child with somebody on the face or some other thing it's just 